hands, lightning with my hands, lightning with my hands, lightning with my hands. I just saw Shazam, 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 Shazam. I just saw Shazam. It was freaking awesome. Yes, this movie was great, guys. I loved it. Tevya was right. This is one of the most fun movies of 2019. I had a blast in the theater. It's a DC movie with a lot of heart, a lot of laughs, and it has a creepy vibe to it, too, that I'm going to explain. The movie, yeah, I got to see it in the theater uh, to, uh, a few, just a few hours ago because the movie's pretty long. It's two hours and 12 minutes. I think the movie could have been shorter, though. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say why. But uh, the movie, just, you know, everything that I, that I saw in the trailer, not everything in the trailer, is, is, is some of the thing in the trailer is misleading. Yes, it is funny, but it's not just laughs, guys. There's a lot of uh, meat to it. There's also a lot of, um, you know, things that happen in the movie that are very, very dark. Like, you don't even see it coming. And it's weird because I was not expecting the movie. Yeah, it, this is not a kid's movie, by the way, guys. This is a movie with a lot of darkness to it. There's a lot of things that happen in the movie. That, you know, you do not see it coming. And yeah, the film, they nailed it. Uh, this director, um, what's his name? Uh, David F. Sandberg. He did a great, great job with the freaking directing. He knows how to shoot a freaking DC movie and put color to it. This guy did Lights Out. And he also directed the Conjur uh, Annabelle creation. Yeah, there's an Annabelle, um, ju just not to say any spoilers. There won't be spoilers in this review. Um... The, the, you know, whatchamacallit, uh, the, there's a lot of Easter eggs in the movie. I'm not going to mention what, but there's a lot of DC e Easter eggs, and there's also an Annabelle doll. I'm going to take this off. Now that you've done a Shazam movie, guys, I want this movie in the next decade, a Flash movie. If you see this movie, you're going to see a lot of elements of the Flash in this movie. And I'm going to say right now, I want a Flash movie, guys. We got Wonder Woman. We got Aquaman. We got Batman and Superman. We got freaking... Uh, cyborg in the DC universe. I want a freaking Flash movie now. Yeah, this guy did a great job. This movie, while it's not going to make as much as Aquaman, it's a lot of fun, guys. The, it was the most superhero superhero movie of the DC universe so far. I hate a Man of Steel. This movie was a total 180 on that. It's not dreary. It doesn't have a ton of flashbacks. There's two flashbacks. That's it. It has a sense of humor. It's got pretty beautiful colors. The film is shot well. It has a night sequence that's way better than The Man of Steel. And like I said, uh, Zachary Levy nailed it. He didn't have this sourpuss freaking face like freaking Henry Cavill. And uh, yeah, the film is 132 minutes. There's 10 minutes they could have cut out of the movie, and I'll, I'll say why. And yeah, it says here, the critics love Le Levi, Grazer's performance, and Sandberg's direction. It was light in tone and sense of fun, with many considering the best of the DCU films. Yes, it is. This beats Wonder Woman by freaking leaps and bounds. It's shorter, it's got a better ending fight, and I was more invested in the character of Billy Batson and, and you know, Shazam, and also his, his, the, film, the, the film stealer, which is uh, Freddy. The, the kids are, in this movie are great. I love all the kids in the movie. I think they're all fantastic. Um... Asher Angel as Billy Batson was fantastic. I thought he he had to carry the movie when he's not Shazam. He has a lot of emotion. He's like he looks like a mix between like Tobey Maguire, a young Tobey Maguire, and uh, Aja Butterfield from Hugo. Really good expressions on his face. Very subtle. He's not an asshole. He has some childish things, but he's a he's a teenage boy. Um, uh, uh, Jack, Jack Dylan Grazer was Frederick. Yes, he stole the show. I thought he was fantastic. Uh, he's the, he's the, the handicapped kid with the, with the half of his, uh, you know, arm is like disabled. So he has to walk with a cane, but he's fantastic. I thought he, you know what he looks like? He looks like freaking, tell me this face and tell me he doesn't look like Freddie Highmore and, uh, and Andrew Garfield, two British actors. And yet he's better than both of them. Because he nailed it. He was like spot on, witty, and he was freaking, he was, he really steals a lot of the movie. The other kids in the movie, who, who were the other kids? You had, um, uh, you had, uh, well, Jaman Hansua Shazam, you know, the, the old wizard, he was good. He was in it because he, he was also in Guardians of the Galaxy and, and the other Captain Marvel movie. Uh, Ian Chen was, was, uh, Eugene. He was good. The, the kid, the Asian kid, he was, he had a lot of funny lines. And also, it was good to see, um, uh, Ross Butler, he was uh, the Asian guy in Casey Undercover. I'm not going to say who he plays, but I want to I want to keep that a secret in case you haven't seen the movie. You have um, 
Javon Armand as Pedro. He, he was pretty good. He was he was fine with what he did. You had F Faith Herman as Darla. She was adorable. I thought she was very cute. And uh, you know, one of the best parts of the you know, of you know the children. They reminded me of the kids from the Goonies. And then you had um Cooper Andrews as Victor. He was the the foster parent. You had Marta Mill Millens as Rosa. I thought she was okay. I didn't really care about her too much. I thought she was all right. But, uh, yeah, there are some flaws in the movie. Like I said, the film is a little bit long. I think at two hours, we get it, guys. Deadpool was not an hour. It was not two hours and 12 minutes. It doesn't need to be that long. Make me laugh. It did. Make, give me some good action. Give me, you know, a character I care about, and the rest will take care of itself. I thought there were some scenes that were just kind of like, like, kind of like underwhelming. The scene with him and his mom when they reunite at the end. That's not a spoiler. Uh, he's looking for his mom in the movie. And, uh, you know, he finds her eventually, and she, they have one conversation, and then they never see each other again. It kind of goes nowhere, in my opinion. Also, Mark Strong is the villain. I didn't hate him, but I thought he was just a Diet Loki. He has a staff. He's blasting people. He's Diet Loki, guys. But, hey, the Captain Marvel villain wasn't that good either. So I'm not going to say I'm, I'm, a Mar I'm a DC hater. No. He's just okay, guys. He's just the, Mark Strong's acting is not the problem. It's just they gave him the same cliched, uh, generic villain plot that we've seen in every other DC movie, every other Marvel movie, every other freaking superhero movie. If you gave him a New York accent, he'd be the villain from Kick Ass again. Oh, you're giving him shit because he's a Brit? No, because he's just underwhelming. You see Loki in the Avengers, he's a threat. You see Thanos in Event in Infinity War, he's a threat. You see freaking Lex Luthor in the original Superman or um, Zod in the original Superman and Superman 2. And you see freaking the villains in, in Arrow. They're a lot better than this guy, guys. I don't even remember his name. What is it, Savannah or something? Yeah, he's, he's really weak. He has a glowing eye. Yeah, that was the villain in freaking the Jumanji sequel with the freaking glowing eye. It, it was just lazy. He looked like a, diet, like a diet Loki with Lex Luthor's bald head. Not an interesting villain. Also, Megan Good is in the movie at the end. Didn't do anything for me. I never thought she was a good actress. I thought she fell flat. They casted somebody that's not black to play the little black girl later in the film. And I'm not going to say what happens, but it's a bad casting choice. I was like, I know who that is, and she can't act, guys. It felt a little bit forced. With Zachary Levy, they nailed it. Freddie, they nailed it. The freaking Asian kid and uh, and and the Spanish, the chubby fat savage kid, and and the original Darla, the uh, the little Darla with the glasses. Uh, she's cute. Megan Good's not. I don't see her as you know. I just don't see her in the, in, in the movie yet, as a good actress. Just the eight ball thing was fine. You know, it was a, it's a plot device. I like the imagery. You know, the special effects look are very well done. The the CGI doesn't look like bad Suicide Squad. Uh, the, the 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 creatures in it, those freaking seven deadly sins. It's in the it's in the trailer. If you've seen the the, the statues in the trailer, yeah, uh, they they. What do you think is going to happen? They're very creepy. And by the way, do not let your little kids watch this movie. This is not the Avengers. This will scare the shit out of them if they're afraid of creepy imagery and creatures with tongues that go. Yeah, it, don't take your kids to see this movie. It is not a kids movie. This is like if you took the Goonies. And put ghosts in them, scary, creepy ass ghosts and freaking like evil spirits. And uh, you took a little bit of like some Indiana Jones. There's a lot of Spider Man Homecoming in this movie because they're in school and they get bullied, just like in Spider Man Homecoming. He's a young teen, just like Tom Holland's Spider Man. Uh, it just reminded me of that. There's a lot of Easter eggs of the DC universe that I love in the movie. I thought that, you know, you saw in the trailer him throwing Batman, uh, Superman. They're, they mention Aquaman, but uh, it's in a post credit scene. But they don't show him. They just mention him. Yeah, the villain was Thaddeus Savannah. Very, very weak. Why is it that these DC movies don't have the best villains? I didn't care for the villain in Wonder Woman. I didn't care for the, the villain in Aquaman. Patrick Wilson's over the top, but at least he has a personality. Strong is just, he's just very generic. That's all I can say. But who else is in the movie? I forgot. Um... Uh, Grace Fulton, that was the other actress that was, she was, um, she was, uh, Mary. I thought she was cute. I thought she did a really good job. She brought a lot of emotion. She wasn't a freaking zombie like the girls in KK Wars. Yeah. See, DC knows how to get actors that can actually show emotion, J.J. Abrams. You wish you did a freaking movie like this. You have no talent. You cast people that suck. People that suck my soul like these freaking creatures in this movie. Yeah, you did that.
You and your dumb freaking writers. This guy knows what he's doing. If he directed a Star Wars movie, I'd be all for it. Yeah, not J.J. Abrams, not Ryan Johnson, not Gareth Edwards' boring ass, and not the and freaking not Ron Howard and the two directors you had that you you got rid of, uh, Lord and Miller. This guy could have done a Knights of the Old Republic because he gets he has a sense of humor, or he could have done a Shadows of the Empire movie, or he could have directed an episode of The Mandalorian and that becomes a success. He knows what he's doing, guys, and this guy does horror. That's why the this horror imagery in the movie and it works. It doesn't feel forced. You get the comedic stuff with Zachary Levy. Him and Freddie have great chemistry. The the, it, the the spark is there. It doesn't feel forced. He, he's a basically a, a kid in a man's body, and I love that. That is a premise. That, there was no controversy with this movie. I love that because with the other Captain Marvel, everybody gave that girl shit, and she made a billion dollars, guys. I, still, I think this movie's better only because the sense of humor really got me, and it made me laugh a lot, and the ending I thought was very super heroic. I thought the action in that movie, though, was better, only because there's more of it and because Carol, you know, is I, I like that character more than Shazam. I'm sorry. I didn't care about Shazam until I saw this movie, just like when I didn't care about Thor in 2011 until uh, I didn't care about Thor until I saw the 2011 Thor movie and uh, and others. Just saying, guys, that's how I feel. I'm being very honest here. And like I said, the movie feels like two movies. Sometimes it's horror, and then sometimes it's an action comedy. It reminded me of Deadpool a lot. There's a, a scene with, with cars that uh, when, when uh, Shazam is falling from you and trying to learn how to fly, and uh, it hits him. And I'm like, yeah, it looked like the scene from Deadpool. And I like that the fact that it's a Christmas movie. There's a lot of Christmas imagery. There's a Santa Claus. There's Christmas, tree, uh, Christmas stockings. There's lights, and there's a lot of music. I love it. I love music movie. I have a soft spot for superhero movies that take place during Christmas. And I will say this. This is the God honest truth. I like this movie better than Iron Man 3. Yeah. This comedy was better. It doesn't have a stupid twist. It doesn't have a shitty supporting cast. It's got a better freaking sense of wonder and, and a you know majestic feel to Christmas. Christmas doesn't feel like a background in this movie. It feels like it adds to the film. It adds color and vibrancy to the film. And it adds a different layer we haven't seen in the DC movie. I laughed my ass off, guys. I was laughing a lot because Zachary Levy, I've always liked him as an actor. I saw him in the Chipmunk sequel, and he made me laugh. He has a smile on his face. He has a great personality on screen. It shows in his performance. He's having the time of his life. When he's like, hands lightning with my hands i was like that was freaking awesome i want to be there with them it's just so fun man this movie must have been a blast and they filmed it in toronto canada yay they filmed it in one of the best northern countries in my area yeah those people have talent too guys that's why it looked like deadpool because they filmed it there and like i said the movie's just a lot of fun I love that it has colors it's not afraid to get silly it's not afraid to show col uh you know actors and, and, and freaking character development. It doesn't force people together that don't work. And I hope this movie does well. It says it's projected to make 50 million. Two weeks before its release, the film grows 3 million Fandango. Higher than Aquaman. I hope it does well. It's not going to make a billion. But as long as it makes its budget back, I'm very happy. Because this movie deserves it. I'm not going to say any spoilers. Not because that's what for my friend's podcast. There's two post-credit scenes. First one's worth it, second one's not worth it. It's just a stupid joke at the end that kind of was like, and eh, that was a dump, kind of a weak scene, but it was still a funny movie. I would definitely give this an 8 out of 10. It's slightly up above from Captain Marvel, only the this Captain Marvel, only because this movie had a better sense of humor. That movie made me laugh my ass off too, guys. The cat in that movie, Samuel Jackson, uh, you know, freaking Free Larson's face, just everything, just... Yeah, that movie made me laugh, but this one made me laugh more. Plus, the cast, the supporting cast in this is better than Captain Marvel. I like the these group of kids and the people at the end more than the freaking uh, Gemma Chan and freaking Ben Mendelsohn and uh, Jude Law and the other Spanish guy that does nothing here. These guys have personalities. That's why we remember them. And when you get to the end, it's a payoff. It is freaking payoff. It's a payoff. They've earned what happens at the end. I'm not going to say anything. It's a great superhero fight. It reminded me. It, it was be This was better than Justice League. I love Batman. I love The Flash. And I, and I really love Wonder Woman. But that movie had an underwhelming uh, conclusion, you know, where who beats the villain? Wonder Woman with a sword. And I'm like, yeah, and the villain was kind of weak, too. Cool voice. Just a weak villain. 
And Man of Steel, you can eat my ass because this is how you do it. You don't bore us to death for two hours and 20 minutes and make us feel like we're going to slit our wrists. Here, the collateral damage is earned. It's not destroying an entire city again. Here, it's at night, but they're destroying some buildings, but it's not the whole freaking thing is totaled. And the product placement is only in one scene. It's not in every single scene. It's in the scene where they go to the grocery store. You saw that in the trailer. Like, hi, thanks for not getting robbed. You're welcome for not getting robbed. That's a funny scene. Uh, he's like, get me, let me, let me get. Where is your best beer? And I'm like, yeah, that was also in the trailer. It was funny. And the movie just it has a sense of humor that just works. This is a PG-13 Deadpool slash Superman hybrid for DC. You did a good thing with this movie, DC. You really did. And like I said, it reminded me of other films too, like uh, Spider-Man: Homecoming, The Goonies. Uh, and other stuff too. Like, what was another movie with caves besides Batman Begins? And the thing is that, like, it, it knows how to have fun with itself. It didn't. It wasn't ashamed to be a superhero movie like that. God awful Fantastic Four movie. That was soulless and boring. This was never boring. There were some slow spots in the middle. Like I said, the scene with the mom just could have been done better. And uh, I didn't really feel the emotion there. I wanted to, but other than that, this movie kicked ass, guys. See it. But don't let little kids see it that are under five. They're going to get scared to death with these creatures. Because they do shit that I did not expect in this movie. I was very shocked. I'm like, wow, they actually went there. There's also some elements of Robocop in the movie, too. We, you know, the, the Savannah building, it reminded me of OCP. And, uh, yeah. And the film looks great. Like, I think the, the, they shot it very well. It's very funny. Who wrote the movie? I really want to give them a hand because, see, this is how you do comedy without forcing it, Michael Bay or freaking Ryan Johnson, where you have to do yo mama jokes and freaking, uh, you know, trop topical humor. You're not Marvel. You're not Marvel, okay? This is Captain, the other Captain Marvel. Uh, his real, his name is The Adventures of Captain Marvel from 1941. So he's his he has Marvel in his name. They just don't say it here. And I like the names that they gave him in the movie. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, Captain uh, Sprink, Spr what was it? Spr Sparkle Fingers or whatever. Sparkle. That, that was funny. Yeah, so the writer was Henry Gaiden and Darren Lemke. He wrote Shrek Forever After, which I like. And he also directed a film called Lost. Uh, Jack the Giant Slayer. I like that movie. Turbo, I thought was underrated. Goosebumps, I like the first one. I think that that had creepy imagery and it had a lot of laughs too. Didn't see Goosebumps too, but this I think is a really good film. You know that he wrote, and Henry Gaiden. Let me see. It, it, yeah, this is the DC that I like to see because I've seen all of, most of their TV shows and they're dreary. A lot of them are just like dramatic. They don't have enough action. There's too much. To, there's comedy that there's a bad soundtrack or there's comedy that doesn't work. Let's see what Henry Gaiden has done because he did a good job. He did Earth to Echo, Miscellaneous, and Spider Man 3, Zombie Roadkill, which is a TV series, Ham Sandwich Short. Yeah, he did a good job. He did. With Spider Man 3, he was the assistant miscellaneous crew member. But like I said, guys, if you want to have fun with a superhero movie before we get to Endgame, which is going to be fantastic, I guarantee you, see this movie. You won't be disappointed. The cast is really good. The humor works. The action, when it's there, it's spectacular. You see, you know, all the visuals. Really well done. The costume looks look great. And I'm not expecting this to get an Oscar because, the you know, the Oscars, they hate DC movies. They never get anything. But anyway, Shazam was freaking awesome. Now, I want my freaking Flash movie, guys. You don't have to get Ezra Miller back. If he doesn't come back, get somebody else. I think it can work if you get a, the right actor if Ezra Miller doesn't come back. Just give me my freaking Flash movie now, guys. Because we've seen elements of the Flash in this movie when he's running fast. It's not That was in the trailer. Yeah, it's awesome. There's a lot of scenes I want to say, but I can't spoil it. So, see Shazam... This is a good movie. It's a great freaking comic book movie. It, it felt like one. It wasn't some forced, you know, agenda-filled thing. And, uh, you know, the movie, like I said, it is it is slightly better. It's slightly better than, 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 than you know, um, what was it? The, uh, the Captain Marvel movie I just saw in March. But it's only because of the sense of humor. Like, I laughed more. But anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And Captain Marvel... Shazam, 
you know, AK, Shaz- the, the DC's Captain Marvel, Shazam, you freaking kicked ass, man. And you nailed it. And you gave us a reason to care about this character. So see the movie, guys. It's worth your time. Later.